welcome back for another Sheriff of Sodium video. Today I'm going to share a talk that I gave for the graduating class, the class of 2021 at the medical school where I teach. There's a school tradition in which students vote for faculty members to give their last lecture in medical school, and it really is an incredible honor to be selected to do it. The remarks that I made here are heartfelt, and, um, and I intended them specifically for this class, but I think I discussed some things that that I hope at least will be useful to a broader audience, and that's why I decided to share this talk here. Thank you to the class of 2021 for letting me speak to you today. It's especially touching because your class has really had a rough go of it lately. You guys were in the middle of your rotations when COVID-19 hit and everything went to pieces. You had to navigate a residency application season that was unlike any other with virtual interviews and a virtual match day. You missed out on a lot of time-honored medical school traditions because of social distancing and general societal disruption. And the hits just keep on coming right up to the end because then you ended up with me as your last lecture speaker. But don't feel bad because, uh, you know, your streak of bad luck has to end sometime. You can't keep uh, rolling those snake eyes indefinitely. And, and honestly, there's a lot of exciting things to look forward to. In just 22 short days, you're going to have your commencement ceremony. And commencement, even, even a virtual commencement, should be a mountaintop moment in life where you pause and you reflect on just how far you've come. To graduate from medical school, to accomplish what you've accomplished, it's a big deal. You're joining an elite profession with all the benefits and obligations that entails. Your commencement speakers, I hope, are going to remind you about this. They're going to tell you repeatedly just how great you are. And look, it's true. You're pretty great. But this isn't commencement. This is the last lecture. It's the school's last chance to impart some kind of wisdom to you before we send you off. And I really wrestled uh, with myself about what that last lesson for you should be. And that's why I decided that uh, instead of telling you how great you are, I'm going to ask you to try to keep something else in your mind as we move through your career. What I think your last lecture should be about is humility. You'll be a better doctor and you'll have a richer and more rewarding career if you stay humble. Let me try to explain what I mean because there's a few ways that I think you want to try to stay humble. First, be humble in the face of disease. This one, I don't actually have to preach about much because um, you know whether you listen to me or not, medicine is gonna humble you. Sometimes you're gonna be humbled in a predictable way because you didn't take your own pulse at a code or you let the sun set on a paranemonic effusion or you effed with the pancreas. But even if you follow all the little rules that you've been taught and you study diligently and always bring your A game, things are still gonna go wrong. And when things go wrong in medicine, they, they go really, really wrong and they stick with you. A few days ago, I glanced at my watch and I saw the date and um, I realized it was the anniversary of a day when a patient of mine had passed away. This was, uh, this was back when I was a fellow. It's been over a decade ago now. And out of respect to him, I'm not going to get into the details medically of his case. Suffice to say that he was a child who had been very sick. He'd been in the ICU for weeks. And he had acute kidney injury that, uh, that required dialysis, um, which is how I got to know him. But things were getting better. He'd, uh, he'd just been moved out to the hospital floor and had started to make a little trickle of urine. And that's what I was talking to him and his parents about when I, when I saw them one beautiful spring afternoon. I told them he was getting better. You know, we could see the light at the end of the tunnel. He was starting to turn the corner. I spent a lot of time in their room that afternoon, and um, he was the last patient that I saw before I left the hospital that evening. When I came back to round um, early the following morning, there was chaos outside his room. I could see the code card at the door. And um, when I came over and peered over the shoulders of the people standing in the doorway, I could see that he had arrested and was receiving CPR. The code was well staffed. There was nothing for me to do but, but watch. And um, from where I was standing, I could see only his legs he was wearing Star Wars jammies. And when I think about him, I remember three things with photographic clarity. I remember his smiling face, which reminded me of my own son. And I remember his legs, limp and moving rhythmically as he received chest compressions. And I remember racking my brain to think about what I could have done differently for him and how things might have been different if I'd been smarter or more careful or better prepared. 
And the honest truth in his case was that there probably wasn't anything realistically that anybody could have done. The truth is that medicine is hard. And this case wasn't a one-off for me, and it's not going to be for you either. You're going to have your own versions of this, I promise. So be humble in the face of disease. It's not going to keep you from getting burned. And it won't even soften the blow when you do. But it will keep you sharp and curious. And somewhere along the way, your patients will benefit from it. But that's not the only thing I want you to be humble about. I want you to be humble about the role that chance has played in your life. And this this can be kind of an uncomfortable thing to do. I'll tell you a story. A few years ago, I was talking with one of our dialysis nurses. As we were chatting, um, it came up that her husband was born prematurely. Actually, he was born very prematurely, and he was a twin. And both he and his twin brother had been enrolled into one of the original clinical trials of respiratory surfactant. You know, surfactant, of course, has, has been a game changer for treating uh, respiratory distress syndrome and prematurity. It made survival possible for an entire generation of infants that otherwise would have had a certain death. So this nurse's husband, he, he was randomized to receive surfactant, but his twin brother was randomized to placebo. The nurse's husband survived, and he went on to have a career as a successful engineer and live this all-American life with three beautiful kids of their own. His twin brother um, never came home from the NICU. He passed away. It's incredible to me to think about that. The idea that someone's entire life could be determined by a coin flip or a number that got spin out of a random number generator or which envelope the research coordinator just happened to grab out of the pile. That idea, it just boggles my mind. And actually, it's so mind boggling that that telling you this story may actually seem far fetched as a teaching point. It might seem like an overly dramatic example of the point that I'm trying to make about how chance plays this important role in your life and your success. But it's not. It's not overly dramatic. It only seems far-fetched because in this particular anecdote, the role of chance was explicit, and there was a control arm to show you the alternative reality that could have been. We almost never have that in our lives. To be here, to be on the cusp of graduating from medical school, it's a big accomplishment. Many of you I have gotten to know personally, and I know some of the major challenges that you face down in your life to get to this point. And for those who I don't even know your story, I still, I can guarantee that each and every one of you have had some serious obstacles that you've had to overcome. You don't end up here by accident. But there's a funny thing about that. We always remember the obstacles that we overcame. What's harder to see are the obstacles that weren't there in the first place. You absolutely have accomplished a lot, but stay humble about some of the undeserved advantages that every single one of you have had along the way. Things in your life where the cards got dealt your way for one reason or another, or where you got an opportunity just because of dumb luck. Stay humble about that stuff because it will help keep you compassionate when you care for people who haven't been dealt quite as good a hand. And along with this, be humble about the role that other people have had in enabling your success. There's no self-made men in medicine. To get to this level, you gotta have people who believed in you. Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was a teacher or a coach way back when you were a kid and they, they saw some promise in you and, and got you to think about yourself in a way that maybe you hadn't before. Maybe it was a role model. Maybe it was some physician that you saw who seemed distant, but he, he or she took the time to see you and pull you forward. Maybe it was your significant other. Maybe it's all the above. The point is that behind every good doctor, there's a series of important people who nudge them or, or encourage them to be better or shape them into the person that you are today. All those folks had a hand in your success, and and acknowledging that role doesn't diminish the fact that that success is still yours. It doesn't diminish that at all. In fact, I think that consciously thinking about it and feeling real gratitude in your heart will enable you and inspire you to play that role for others. All the people that have meant something to you in your life, you didn't deserve them. They got put before you by chance or by a benevolent universe or by a higher power. The point is you got lucky. And when you're humble about that, when you're humble about the role that that others have played in your life and how they got there, you're more likely to realize when when luck is putting you in front of someone that you might mean something to and that you can be a part of their future success and pull them forward and bring them along for the ride too. 
last thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to stop. The final thing that I want you to be humble about is losing. You know, it wouldn't be wrong to look at where you are now and see yourself as a victor in some grand competition that goes back all the way to when you were just a little kid. You have gone through multiple rounds of intense vetting and increasingly high hurdles um, that you had to clear just to get to where you are now. And that's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. It means that you're one of the best of the best. But I think it's also true that, um, that getting to where you are now changes you. To get here, you have to become very good at convincing other people that you're good. You've got to convince multiple rounds of people at multiple layers that you're smart, that you're capable, that you're deserving of their respect, that you deserve the opportunity to learn medicine. And in a way, this, this process of convincing people that you're elite, that you're deserving, in a way, that whole process is, is just a game. But to graduate from medical school, you've got to learn how to play that game and you've got to learn how to play it well. When you play the game, you're at least forced to become aware that you have competition. You develop at the very minimum an awareness of where you think you stand relative to others. It hums in the back of your thoughts. And you develop a very keen sense about whether you're winning the game, whether you're convincing others that you're deserving of respect and opportunity. But sometimes when you're good at playing the game, the game itself becomes self-sustaining and you forget why you're playing it in the first place. At its worst, you can become so focused on ascending to the next rung of the ladder that you don't even think about where that ladder is going. But still, it feels intensely like not reaching that next rung, or, or even worse, choosing to not even extend your hand and try to reach it. It feels like a loss. I wanted to talk about that today because finishing medical school, it, it really represents a crossroads in your career. And I realized that many of the games that you played to get to this crossroads, you, you had to play them or you wouldn't be listening to this lecture today. And there's nothing I can do about that but apologize and say that I, I wish that certain things about our system were different than how they are. And unfortunately, you're going to have to keep playing the game, at least, um, at least to some extent, for a little while longer to finish your training. But as time goes by, you're going to start to have more choices. Some are going to be subtle and some are going to be overt about what games in your career you choose to play. And more than anything else, I want you to look at what you choose to focus your energy upon, not as a tactical decision because it's necessary to get to the next step or, or grasp the next rung of the ladder, but because you're choosing to devote your time and your talent and your energy to something that brings you joy or makes the world a better place. If you get stuck in the rut of doing things that you don't want to do just to earn a promotion or a title or an honorific or more money or to prove your worth or because you feel like not reaching for those things just to keep your options open is a loss or because it will make you appear non-elite to a certain audience, whatever that audience is, you're choosing to play a game that has no natural end. You're ascending a big, giant extend a ladder that just grows larger every time that you grasp another rung. There will always be something, someone that has more of, of it, whatever it is. And without a little humility, you're always going to chafe a little at the feeling that you're losing. And you can get trapped. Talking about this part, I, I, I'm a little bit out of my depth because it's not like I've been doing medicine for years and years and years. I still feel like I've got more career ahead of me than behind. But I'm going to be honest. I've been doing this for long enough to see some of my friends from medical school or residency get burned out. And I've seen residents in our program who've been burned out. And dare I say, I've even seen our own medical students who were burned out. And everyone's story is a little bit different. And, and I'm no expert on physician wellness and burnout. But what's always struck me in all these cases that I know about is that there's this common denominator. There's this is common lesion. There's a lack of meaning. Medical students and residents and doctors, they're not afraid of working hard. But when you work hard or when you work harder and harder for things that you ultimately know don't matter and that don't bring your life or the lives of others meaning, it's a sure recipe to feel devalued and dehumanized. And pretty soon, you're just an empty vessel floating through each day. More than anything, I want you to have the humility to frame your success and your failure in a broader sense. Have the courage to measure yourself honestly instead of always letting someone else hold the measuring stick. Always, always work to make yourself better. 
always do right by your patients and always try to bring good to the world. And when you do, feel good about that. It was an honor to speak to you today and I wish you my very best for the future. Thank you.